Hey everyone, welcome back to chapter 8, and today we're talking about fourth conjugation, present tense, and you can find this in your book on page 100. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead right into it and set up a chart. Uh, for the conjugation with first, second, and third person, and singular and plural. And our sample verb is going to be the verb audio. And so the principal parts are audio, audire, audiwi, auditum, and audio means to hear or to listen to. Okay, so uh, as you might have guessed, uh, the distinguishing uh, feature of fourth conjugation is that its infinitive ends in an IRE. So verbs that are ERE uh, are all fourth conjugation. And so in order to conjugate this, we're going to do the same process essentially that we did for first and second. We're going to take off the RE and get our stem. And my first principal part is still my first person singular. So audio will go here. And then I'll write my stem, which is Audi. all throughout the chart. Okay, and then I am going to add endings. So I already have my O for audio. Then I add an S, so audis, uh, a T, which I will dot, uh, audit, and then mus, so audimus, then tis, auditis, and then in the third plural, I'm actually going to add in a U, like I did for third conjugation. So it's audiunt. Okay, so it's I-U-N-T for the third plural. So it is, you can't just drop the R-E and add endings for each one. You do have to add in a U for third plural. So the full conjugation is audio, audis, audit, audimus, auditus, Audiunt, and the translations are all the same. So audio is I hear, audis is you hear, audit, he, she, or it hears, audimus, we hear, auditis, you all hear, and audiunt, they hear. And by the way, I forgot to mention that we're conjugating this in the active, right? So this is active, but we knew that was active because we have our active endings, which are O, S, T, mus, tis, ent. Okay, now let's do the passive. Okay, so audio, fourth conjugation in the passive, and we'll set up a chart with first, second, third person, singular, and plural. Okay, and this time I'm going to put the principal parts up here. So audio, actually I'm only going to put the first and second principal parts, audio, audire, okay, so what we're really interested in is the infinitive. I'm going to take off the RE, I'm going to drop my first principal part down into the chart here, and so audio will go in the first person singular, and then I'm going to write my stem. Okay, so I've got the stem, uh, and now I'm going to put in my endings. Remember, passive endings are ris ter mer mini enter. So audior, audiris, auditor, the I there is long, audimer, audi mini. And just like in the active here, I have to add in a U. So audiunter. Okay, and when we're translating these, Audior would be, I am heard. Audiris, you are heard. Auditor, he, she, or it is heard. Audimer, we are heard. 
uh, audimini, you all are heard, and audiunter, they are heard. So fourth conjugation looks a lot more like first and second, where you're just dropping the RE and then adding the appropriate endings uh, for active, OST, must is ent, for passive, aris ter, mermini inter, but just remember that in the third plural, you have to add in that U, okay? Uh, so that's fourth conjugation. One more thing that I want to talk about is forming the imperative for fourth conjugation. Okay, so remember that uh, to form the imperative, we take the RE away from the infinitive, and that gives us the singular imperative, the command form. So if I want to form the imperative of audio, I would take audire, take away the RE, and then I have audi, which would mean listen, or hear, and so I'd be telling you to do that. And if I wanted to make it plural, I would add te, just like for uh, first and second conjugation. Of course, the translation wouldn't stay the, would stay the same. I would just be talking to more than one person. Okay, plural. And this is, of course, singular. Okay, so that's how you form the imperatives for fourth conjugation. Uh, we actually, uh, in the last lecture, missed the imperatives for third conjugation. Okay, so I want to go over those really quickly. So, imperatives... Okay, third conjugation. All right, and so let's use uh, peto again. That was our example from the last lecture. So uh, peto, petere, I'm going to take away the RE and get pete, which would be seek or ask. Okay, and then for the plural, instead of just adding TE, this time I'm going to go back to dropping the entire ERE, like I did for the stem in the conjugation, and I'm going to add I-T-E, petite. Third conjugation always has to be a little difficult, uh, and so that would still mean seek, but you'd be talking to more than one person, so plural for petite and singular for pete. So really, the only exception here is third conjugation, plural. And so let's review all the conjugations for imperatives real quick. So, we, so we'll set up real quick just first, second, third, and fourth conjugation, and singular, and plural. Okay, so uh, we'll start with first, so we'll use woko as our verb, so woka and wokate, those would both mean call. And then for second conjugation, say doke and dokete, those would both mean uh, teach. And for third conjugation, we use peto, so pete and petete, those would both be seek. And then for fourth conjugation, audi and audite, those would both mean here. Okay, so really, third conjugation in the plural is the only one that is kind of outside of the rules of just adding te to the plural. Okay, so you have to go back to dropping the, the ere and add ite to make the plural for third conjugation. Okay, uh, so uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and, and see you next time.